We will now have our scripture reading. Taken this morning from Matthew chapter 28, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 7. Matthew 28. We have it up on the screen as well. <coughs> says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Thank you all for coming this morning. Um, we have all worked very hard, and um, on your program, I have I have to have you fix something. <laughs> yes, Diana. <laughs> so I want you all to take your pen or pencil. And down, just past the resurrection, Rosa Johnson, I want you to add Diana Fiddler, and she's going to be singing Because I Am. I worked so hard getting all my spaces and everything correct, and then I left out Diana's name, so I apologize. <laughs> so you're on there now, and um, God bless you all.
is that it's beautiful. And being my poem is thoughts of Jesus. Father, why am I forsaken? Why is my life being taken? You said you'll never leave my side, yet from all sin you have to hide. The sins you see are not my own. I didn't dishonor your holy throne. I live to bring glory to you in everything I say and do. From my birth in the manger, you have kept me from danger. All the things that Satan tried just to draw me from your side. Temptations and trials too. Thank you for seeing me through. I know it all was in your plan, giving salvation to every man. You gave me 33 years to share their laughter and their tears, to leave 99 who didn't stray and help the one, the lost one, find the way, sorry. There were times that were good when everything went as it should. Your messages I would preach, your love and mercy I would teach. You gave me power beyond belief to provide healing and relief. The little children ran to thee lovingly and willingly. I pray all people make the choice to worship you in heart and voice. Coming as a little child, humble, meek, loving, and mild. I pray for them your glorious peace and the hope that doesn't cease. Once they see me put to death and take my final earthly breath, will they hear me cry to you, forgive them, they don't know what they do? Or will they just walk away and say it's just another day? Will they all come back and see when my grave is down empty? Will it be worth the pain? Or have I done this all in vain? If it brings just one to me, it will be worth the agony. I will gladly pay the price and be the lamb of sacrifice. Thank you. Happy Easter. Amen.
Jesus has done for me. So in everything do to others what you would have them do to you, Matthew 7, 12. Whoever wants to become great among you must become your servant, Mark 10, 43. Be devoted in one another in brotherly love, Romans 12, 10. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see, John 9, 25. Your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. Matthew 18, 14. For the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. Luke 19, 10. Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Do not be afraid. John 14, 27. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. 12, 14. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Be not my will, but yours be done. Luke 22, 42. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. He is not here, he has risen. Luke 24, 6. This same Jesus will come back the same way you've seen him coming to heaven.
He'd hoped for a peaceful Passover. The city is anything but quiet. Simon prefers his open fields. And now, to top it off, the Roman guards are clearing the path for some who knows which dignitary who marches, sol who marches soldiers and strut his stallion past the people. There he is. Simon's head and dozens of others turn. In an instant, they know this is no dignitary. It's a crucifixion. He hears someone whisper. Four soldiers, one criminal, four spears, one cross. The inside corner of the cross saddles the convict's shoulders. His base drags in the dirt. His top teeters in the air. The dim condemned man steadies the cross the best he can, but stumbles beneath its weight. He pushes himself to his feet and lurches forward before falling again. Simon can't see the man's face, only a head wreathed with thorny branches. The sour-faced centurion grows more agitated with each diminishing step. He curses the criminal and the crowd. Hurry up. There's hope for that. Simon says to himself, the cross-bearer stops in front of Simon and heaves for air. Simon winces at what he sees. The beam rubbing against an already raw back, rivulets of crimson streaking the man's face, the mouth hung, hangs open, both out of pain and out of breath. His name is Jesus. Someone speaks softly. Move on. Commands the executioner. But Jesus can't. His body leans and he try, but he can't move. The beam begins to sway. Jesus tries to steady it, but can't. Like a just cut tree, the cross begins to tone, topple toward the crowd. Everyone steps back except the farmer. Simon instinctively extends his strong hands and catches the cross. Jesus falls face first in the dirt and, sit, and stays there. Simon pushes the cross back on its side. The centurion looks at the exhausted Christ and the bulky bystander and needs only an instant to make the decision. He presses the flat of his spear on Simon's shoulders. You. Take the cross. Simon dares to object. <clears throat> Sir, I don't even know the man. I don't care. Take up the cross. Simon growls, balances the timber against his shoulder, and steps out of the crowd, onto the street, out of the unknown, into history and becomes the first in a line of millions who will take up the cross and follow Jesus. He did literally what God called us to do figuratively. Take up the cross and follow Jesus. If any, if, if any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. And take up the cross each day and follow me. Amen. Amen. The song I'm going to sing to glorify our Lord and Savior today is called Calvary. It was written by a spiritual poet named Henry Vaughan in 1655 in Wales, England. He was also an author and a physician. In 1895, Paul Rodney...